Hey again, this is Bits Online reporting from the Crypto Cannabis Conference in Denver 2018. And now I'm really lucky to have talking to us Mr. Dano Washington, who's the president and CEO of Secure Experts, which is an infosec company. Now, uh, Dano, I saw your presentation earlier on and it was, uh, it was kind of controversial given the crowd here. Absolutely. The purpose of our conversation was not, so to speak, to uh, be pro or against cryptocurrencies, but to create a level of awareness that as people are moving toward cryptocurrencies, there's a big gap of education. A lot of people just jump on bandwagons like they used to do with fads and multi-level marketing, Ponzi schemes and other areas. So our purpose was to be able to create an awareness that cybersecurity, as well as using Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, have significant risk. And with those significant risks, that before people would jump into the river without a lifeboat, then uh, we're here to let people inform them of what those risks are. And we used a prolific statement to say that cryptocurrencies is bull as kind of our moniker to kind of introduce people and to engage them to create a higher level of awareness that they need to be aware before they start getting into the cryptocurrency market of those risks. Yeah, I tend to agree, and I think a lot of people think that Bitcoin and cryptos are some kind of magic bullet that's going to solve every problem in every industry, including the uh, the cannabis industry here in Colorado. So, um, your your T-shirt, <laughs> I think it's designed to be kind of provocative. Bitcoin is shit. <laughs> so, well, one of the things that we look at as far as to be provocative was to start the controversy behind the people who do take advantage and exploit people who are new to the game. Uh, our company and myself, I have a level of expertise in cryptocurrencies and people are trusting people who are actually positioning them for failure in the market and the exploitation and the ransomware and the technical and non-technical threats. People just say, oh, this is everything to everybody. It solves all of these kinds of problems. And really it has a propensity to do just the opposite, to create more problems than what it's worth. The lack of regulation, the lack of cybersecurity over the Bitcoin wallets, a heavy investment of a fad where people are hoping that this is going to change their world. Some things that are always shimmering like gold aren't always shining like gold. They're more like this kind of brown. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're here to inform the market of. So having said all that, like, can Bitcoin still do some good or is it? Uh, do you feel it's not useful at all for this industry? Well, like I said before, I do see that there are opportunities for the future use and evolution, but there's a lot more maturity that needs to happen in the market. But if you think about it, as things evolve and as technology evolves, some things do kind of play out. We're talking about being more energy wise and energy efficient. Bitcoin mining is not uh, green. It involves generation of computing power. It involves the capabilities of people to trust network systems that are inherently insecure. And there's a false sense of security that's going on that we hope to create awareness that if you are going to participate in cryptocurrency, it should be treated as a stock or an investment, something that you can lose. There's no in levels of insurance. If the cryptocurrency wallets get stolen, there's nothing you can do. And some people are willing to accept those levels of trades, but do so with the level of awareness that you are doing that. Right. And I, I, I was wondering, what, what are some of the specific risks that you, uh, that you covered earlier in your presentation? I think you, you were saying things like, yeah, even a ledger hardware wallet can't be fully trusted enough to hold uh, you know, a life-changing amount of funds. It's greater than that. Um, if you think about the manufacturing of the hardware, if you can compromise a machine that you can pl plug a trusted device into, that machine is compromised as well. You cannot assert any what's called a level of security if you're plugging a secure chip into an unsecure laptop or connecting to an unsecure system. So that thorough end-to-end -end security, end-to-end -end protection that's validated, trusted, screened, and scanned, then the probability of you being scammed or having your Bitcoin wallet stolen is almost uh, 100%. So that's where the awareness comes in. Almost 100%. Well, I'm saying with a level of time, motivation, and resources, the higher the value of the Bitcoin wallet, the higher the level of the security protections. And knowing how to go after the high value targets, if that's done but from an uninformed user, that is 100%. Almost. So uh, a bit personal, but do you hold any Bitcoin yourself? 
I do not. Uh, I currently do not believe that cryptocurrency is an appropriate way to move forward. I think that the anonymity of the transactions leads to certain areas that can't be attributed or protected. And that ultimately, when users and individuals use Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies as a way to protect their anonymity, that is being and kind of done under the radar and whether they might, might not want anyone else to track them, it leaves a lot of open gates. And I've seen through example of some of the bad things that have been done with cryptocurrency, such as ransomware held against people's commercial organizations and other things. So I think that legislation is ultimately going to start being very restrictive over the use and detection of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And then it's just going to be a fad that's going to just go away. Yeah, I, I do tend to agree with uh, part of that point in that uh, the regulations are going to get uh, tougher and tougher. Yes. So, um, I think one one thing that people raised down on the floor, I, the reaction was a little bit hostile, I think. It's a it's a Bitcoin crowd, so you got to expect that. But um, they were saying that how how is the current Fiat Federal Reserve system any more secure or any more working in our interests than uh, the cryptocurrencies? Well, my point actually was to be a little hostile. It was to stir the crowd out, to engage them and to be fully engaged, to let them know that I have a, a very staunch opinion and a staunch belief in my thought processes. But in relationship to the federal government and the Federal Reserve, which has been hacked, at least there's a law enforcement agency as well as the U.S. federal government. There's the Secret Service, there's the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and there's commercial organizations called InfraGuard, who currently work on investigating crimes and cr criminal activities that involve especially the attacks against U.S. government and federal networks. In the area of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, there's very little law enforcement capability. It's kind of a do-as-your-own-risk kind of an approach. And with that kind of a strategy, then I feel that the people are better protected by working with systems that do have a fiduciary level of responsibility that's backed by the federal government, that there are regulations behind how they work, and a level of law enforcement that can assist in the detection and the bringing to justice of offenders if they do, in fact, try to attempt to evade or to steal from a bank or a Federal Reserve network where there's very, very little assistance that you can get in the event of your Bitcoin while it being stolen. Yeah, and... Uh... I guess, although I think those uh, those systems could be in place, you know, within five or ten years, is that possible? It certainly is. But just as far as a lot of transitions and the way that the markets move, and as I envision cryptocurrencies being a fad, I think that what's going to happen is that as trusted government systems and their own internal monetary regulation and how they transact business will become more transparent that the government's level of protections and securities using technology such as public key infrastructure and digital certificates that can affect a lot of new and emerging cybersecurity regulations. One, in fact, is called the General Data Protection Regulations and requirements that are had by the EU are building a new standardized model that the world is looking for conformance that will increase the level of security of commercial and cryptographic transactions through the world and that that will provide a lower sense of responsibility and increase the consumer confidence and the citizen's confidence in the economic systems that we currently have, which would then push out the requirement for these underlying alternative cryptocurrencies. Right. And uh, I've heard a lot of people in this industry say that uh, Bitcoin and crypto is more of a fundraising mechanism than a payments mechanism. Do you think there's any potential there, you know, with an ICO or a, a company proprietary token or anything like that? Yeah, I think that certain kinds of transactions that could be used, like, for example, if the blockchain and those form of, of the derivatives and not being used in the currency standpoint, you know, and I do want to stay pretty specific to the cryptocurrency, I think that you will see different levels of evolution that are going to come. But in the end, I really think that there are going to be adaptable uses. There are going to be proper use cases. But as far as by what I see currently with the state of the, the world, as far as how money is being exchanged, there's a lot of policy and a lot of regulation that has to be worked through. And in five or 10 years, it's probably a low level of time for these things to take place. But eventually, I do think that they'll get there. But for right now, until there's a greater sense of market awareness and capability, I think that people should steer away 
from cryptocurrencies as a mechanism to bank their future and to start doing all the mining and bank their whole life. The volatility and the swings, you already see that in the market now. And I think that whereas Bitcoin might be one of the more formative levels of cryptocurrencies, all of the rest of them, I think that they're a very bad idea. Yeah, I tend to tell people that it is still very much experimental and uh, anything could happen. Um, however, I think there's there's Bitcoin services and there's Bitcoin services, and I, some of them are really working hard to make things secure. Some of them are not so secure. So uh, have you seen any that you would trust at all? Well, I'm not going to name any names, but as far as by being in the cyber expertise and having a business that's been in business for 16 years with the sole purpose of providing advisory services for top-notch level supply chain, data breach, information security, and cybersecurity, I would say that it would really take systems like uh, Bitcoin has the highest level of the probability, but outside of the other ones, there are very uh, innocuous and low-level technical means, and now you have social means through spear phishing and ransomware and side channel attacks to being able to make these Bitcoin holders easy targets. So with the operators increasing with the level of sophistication that they are, I think that uh, the challenge is to protect these others and saying one is better than the other. I would say that uh, they're all very vulnerable targets. And I think that unless you're prepared to lose this investment that you've made in the research and development and use it in an experimental way, that it's better to stay safer with things that are backed by the U.S. federal government or national government to make sure that you are having a certain level of protection than no protection at all. And what about for people who don't live in the U.S.? So what if you live in Zimbabwe or uh, Brazil or Venezuela or something like that? Well, it provides a different kind of a area. You know, when we're talking about world currencies, this has a different kind of a connotation. The ability to generate Bitcoin and requires the production of power. And power in third world countries and other areas is not as readily available. It takes different kinds of tools. And as areas such as what diamonds happen with the De Beers and what happened with gold in South Africa, these things become to be sucked up by organizational governments and people who are affiliated with high regimes that are mostly linked to organized crime and other areas that are more clandestine in their approach. Those approaches will overwhelm the normal everyday citizen of these third world countries just trying to make a living. It eventually will end up being along the lines of what happened with Las Vegas during its early days and the maturity model that only the people who you don't want to be in control will end up being in control, which is exactly opposite than the way that it was originally intended to start. Right. Maybe it's just me, but that also sounds a little bit exciting as well as scary. Well, it does, but in the area of what we do as an organization as secure experts is that we provide protection and we know that the world as it moves from a physical world to more of a cyber world then we know that on the battlefront the next domain is cyber as the ability for people to achieve and to exceed or also to do the other areas so i consider us to be like the control mechanism or the linchpin who can call bullshit on certain kinds of things and identify when something is not quite right and to create levels of education to at least create a higher level of understanding and awareness. And if that's all that we did today, then I think that by the crowd's response, we clearly have met that objective. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I think this industry in general could use a lot more bullshit calling at certain points. Well, they do because manufacturers and people who create products they don't design products with security in mind. They don't look at their consumer. They're, we're in an area where we're just trying to develop an app that's going to generate more ads. People are sacrificing privacy for convenience. They're giving up all of their personal information. And we're going to reach a new low where there's no ability to have anything that's private, no ability to have anything that's sacred. We'll just be existing without any forms of controls over our life. And I think that that's one of the things that we've let slip and that we have to kind of get back and in the area of tech and in crypto, with digital currencies being more available, and if people don't aren't aware, it's just like the old phone scams. And this stuff is not new, but even in the area of extortion, you know, you'll see cyber extortion. You're going to see an increase in ransomware. You're going to see a lot of people losing their financial areas because they place trust in something that they really shouldn't. So we're not trying to put the brakes on it. 
But we are trying to say that until you have a formidable solution and has an ability to really meet the protection that you require, that you're not wandering aimlessly and jumping on a fad. And that's why we do believe that calling bullshit on certain things will cause the, the other side to have to come back with stronger levels of defense and stronger levels of assertion and stronger things to convince experts in industry that it's good to go and it's safe to go. Excellent, yeah, and you're, you're not the first person I've heard who said that too, so it is a common view that's creeping in around the edges. Yes, I definitely think so, but one of the things that I think that we all have to think about is if we're not a, trying to do bad, we're trying to do good. Yeah. And anything that we have to create the conversation, to be able to educate and to create the levels of awareness, and even sometimes we might agree to disagree, that that's still a good way to being able to advance the conversation, and if all of the viewers see this, I think that they will all agree that the market has been underserved in the area of talking about cybersecurity when they're starting to talk about crypto. And we're going to continue to wear the shirts and continue to profess the name until we can see a, a, a change in the industry that makes me to have to take this off. All right, good. Well, I hope to don't take this the wrong way, but I hope you can take your shirt off next time. I hope I can. <laughs> as long as I don't want it to get stolen from me. The right. shirt gets stolen off my back, right? Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. That was uh, Dano, Dano Washington of Secure Experts. It's uh, secureexperts.com. Yes, it is. All right. Check that out. And check out bitsonline.com for all the latest news and interviews. See you next time. Mm -hmm.